So I haven't looked at many EVGA boards lately, but I thought, why not? So I'm gonna have a look today at the EVGA H55V. This is an H55 motherboard, that means it's compatible with all Core i3, Core i5, and Core i7 processors on LGA 1156. So what that means though, is that not all of the features are necessarily compatible with the processors. So if you are running, say for example, a Core i3 dual core processor, you will be able to run onboard video. If you're running a Core i5 quad core or a Core i7 on this particular motherboard, the onboard video won't work. You'll have to install an add-in graphics card. So a little bit more on that shortly. EVGA, first of all, includes a huge visual guide to your new motherboard. I love these. I think that they're a really nice touch. They give you a full-size picture, like actual size picture of the motherboard where they label all of the important components and they also give you some quick instructions on how to do the various things you might have to do. So you can see that the, well, okay, we're not going to look at the picture for too long because obviously we have a real motherboard here that we could look at instead. So once I get this opened up, I will definitely have a closer look at all the different features. Next we find an IO shield. Okay, fairly run of the mill IO shield. Next inside the box we find two black straight SATA cables, so neither of these are right angle. Something to note about the EVGA SATA cables is one end features a lock and the other end has no lock. So the locking end is intended to go into your motherboard. They also include a Molex to two SATA power connectors and these have a lock on them. That's something I haven't seen before. It's, there's actually a little lever there that you press. Interesting. Yeah, I've never seen that before. Then we have a USB PCI bracket. Next, we have a driver CD. Do not use it. Download the latest drivers off the EVGA website. Next, we have the EVGA H55V motherboard installation guide. So installing the CPU, the CPU fan, the system memory, the IO shield, and securing the motherboard into the system case. They also cover all of the power connectors you'll have to configure, as well as the front panel connectors for things like uh, the case power, case reset, all that kind of stuff. All right, so let's get this board out. And this is another one of my favorite things about EVGA boards. I'm going to break the suspense in just a moment as soon as I get the board out of the bag. This thing, please read before CPU installation. That is the funniest thing ever. Step one, and step two, and step three, and step four. So they actually give you all the instructions to install your CPU in such a way that you cannot possibly even attempt it without reading the instructions. So, like all H55 motherboards, we've got support for dual channel DDR3 memory. We have an LGA 1156 socket here. They are, I can't tell what brand of socket they're using, so I guess we won't get too much further into that. Power connectors are in their almost optimal locations. We've got the 24 pin here, but the four pins kind of in no man's land all over here. Something to note though, because this is a micro ATX motherboard, the odds of it being a bad thing for the four pin power to be here are much less because many micro ATX cases don't actually have conventional layouts in terms of where the motherboard and the power supply goes. So it's quite possible you won't run into any problems with that. Now, there is one that is a bit of a problem. I don't really like the layout of the SATA ports because the PCI Express connector here, if you have a dual slot card, is actually going to potentially cover these three ports and make it difficult to access them. That said, this is a fairly low end board. So if you're installing an add-in graphics card, you're probably not putting in a super high end long one. So for most people, it's probably gonna be a non-issue. Like I said before, SATA ports. So we've got five here down at the bottom. USB headers, there are plenty Plenty. There are one, two, three, four USB headers, and they're color coded bright pink so that you can find them very easily. Next, we've got the chipset, and the H55 chipset obviously doesn't produce a whole lot of heat. You've got this little tiny heat sink on it, not a whole lot going on in there, I think. Next, we've got expansion. So you've got one legacy PCI slot, one PCIe 1X slot one PCIe 4X slot and one PCIe 16X graphics slot. I wouldn't have minded seeing those switched around so that you can use a graphics card and the 4X slot, but really there aren't too many add-in cards that go into a 4X slot these days, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. This appears to be front panel audio, and then I guess that pretty much does it for the top side of the board. Let me see if there's anything else noteworthy. Oh. 
I have never seen something that looks like this before. There, this is totally irrelevant and I don't know what it does, but I've never seen one of these on a motherboard before. That is all. Let's go around to the back panel. So you've got two PS2 ports, one for the mouse, one for the keyboard, and let's get a little bit more into this onboard video issue. You've got a VGA port, a DVI port, and an HDMI port. Now, unless you're using a Core i3 or a Core i5 dual core, and please note that I'm grouping in the Pentium dual core LGA1156 with the Core i3 LGA1156, all of those feature onboard video on the CPU. So that means that all it is is a pass-through from the CPU's onboard video to these ports. So unless you're using a CPU with onboard video, they're just dead ports for decoration. You can plug something into them, but they won't do anything. Next, we have four USB ports. That's not a lot of USB ports for, a, for an H55 motherboard, but I mean, you can always use a hub. It's not that big of a deal. You've got a gigabit ethernet port, one eSATA port. That's really nice to see on such an entry level board. And then you've got 7.1 audio. Thanks for checking out my quick unboxing and product overview of the EVGA H55V.